Maria, I just don't know anything anymore. I often wonder why Sonic Adventure 2 Battle was created, what its purpose is. You know, I loved it so much as a kid, it was my favorite thing in the world. But then I got older, and it started to become mid to me. Mid, Maria. Maybe, if I replay it now, and talk about what I like and don't like about it online, I will find the answers. Maybe. Maria. Guys, Sonic Adventure 2 was my childhood. If I were to ask 10-year-old me what his favorite game is, he would probably say Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. This game had everything that I could possibly want. High-speed Sonic stages, blasting fools, more treasure hunting, impeccable music, Sonic the Hedgehog. This was, and still is probably, my favorite version of Sonic to this day. He's the coolest, like, there are so many different versions of Sonic the Hedgehog out there. He's been written and rewritten and repackaged into various different archetypes, and out of all of them, the Sonic Adventure 2 battle version of Sonic is the coolest. I don't care if you say he's cheesy or he's outdated or the lines that he delivers are cringe. He is the most effortlessly cool version of Sonic there ever is and there ever was, and you can't tell me otherwise. I love this version of Sonic, and I love the voice actor who did this guy. Uh, who was the guy who did Sonic in this game? Ryan Drummond. Drummond. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, I fucked that up. Thank you, Ryan. I hope you're doing well in life. I don't know what this guy is up to these days, but man, I really miss him being Sonic. This version of Sonic is so cool personality-wise. He is confident and cocky, and he is the perfect combination of those two. He's not too confident, but he's not too cocky. He's just... Right. And he doesn't act like a kid in this one, like he does in certain high-profile movies that he's been in lately. He acts like, more like an adult. I mean, apparently, all the characters in Sonic are teenagers, which is weird, but Sonic acts more like an adult, a young adult at the very least, and I love this version of him. He's serious when he needs to be, but he's confident and laid back whenever he chooses to be. This version of Sonic, honestly, is the alpha chat of all Sonics. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. And that's probably a big reason why I loved this game as a kid. That being said, what do I think of Sonic Adventure 2 now? Listen, when you're a kid, there are various bells and whistles that come along with games that you cling to. And you cling to these bells and whistles and that causes you to ignore everything else. It causes you to ignore all the red flags. As a kid, as a preteen, this game was perfect because it was cool to me. Sonic was cool. The story was cool. Shadow was cool. The rivalry between Sonic and Shadow carried me all the way through this. It was like Goku versus Vegeta to me. And I could not wait for them to meet head to head. That was the driving force for me. But nowadays, okay, here's what Sonic Adventure 2 has going for it. Its speed stages are solid, if not decent at times. The treasure hunting stages are awesome as always, minus maybe one or two. This is Knuckles, and, I'm back. and that's it. The mech stages are probably the worst part of this game for me. I just don't see what there is going for these stages, especially Tails mech stages. I feel like the mech stages are the worst part of this game because when you boil it down, it's basically just mindless shooty-shooty. I mean, the whole idea is you want to lock on to as many enemies as possible before you shoot your rocket to get, rack up as many points in like a combo mode, but like, I don't know, like, that's just not interesting enough to me to string me along through the entire stage, like, I mean, sure, it's cool to get a higher score, but like, you know, who the hell cares about getting a higher score? You can get a higher ranking in the level, but, I mean, unless you're trying to complete the game, what does that do for you? If you're somebody who's just trying to get through these stages, or you're just trying to play through them because you want to progress in the game, most likely you're just going to be mashing the target button and shooty button. You're not going to be shooting for any strategy here, because that's all these levels are, is just shooting at stuff and moving forward. And combined with the very haphazardly thrown together controls, 
of these mechs, it just makes for a very slow, annoying time in the game. One cool thing about Sonic Adventure 2 is that there are, even though there are parallels between the characters in terms of gameplay, Sonic and Shadow do speed, Tails and Eggman do mech, Knuckles and Rouge do the treasure hunting, there are slight differences between the characters, little tweaks if you will, to uh, I guess freshen things up or to make each character feel, feel more special. Tails and Eggman's differences in terms of their mech stages are as follows. It feels like Tails' mech refuses to gain any amount of speed or any amount of momentum unless you're moving straight forward. Eggman's mech is the opposite. Eggman feels like he can keep some speed going no matter what direction he's going. Whether it's straight, whether he's turning a little bit left, whether he's turning a little bit right, he can keep the momentum, the pace, he can keep the pace up. It feels like whenever I try to move anywhere besides straight forward with Tails, he loses all momentum. It's like, it's like, it's, it's like you're constantly running uphill with this guy. Tails' level where he's in the city, uh, geez, I've forgotten the name of that one as well. Hold up. Mission Street. That's it. Mission Street is an awful level because the whole level is structured to where you are literally constantly running uphill in this mech. And if you go by the rules that I just explained to you of how Tails' mech operates, this is terrible. This is the most slow, plotting level in the entire game because you're constantly, literally having to run uphill with Tails' awful mech. And because Tails' mech hates going anywhere besides straight forward on flat ground, you can't gain any speed. It's the most jarring thing in the world. It's like Tails is running up this hill with like a bag of like 10 steel titanium balls in his knapsack or whatever. It's so bad. You can barely get any speed going and you're like literally almost trudging through this thing at a snail's pace. Eggman's mech stages aren't much better, but at least he has the added benefit of being able to keep momentum going. And not to mention that some of his mech stages are designed better overall in general. Like, I love his space stage, which basically just has you constantly moving upward thanks to the lack of gravity you have in space, and so you use your hover boots. That's awesome. Aside from that, the mech stages are like a massive blemish on this game. I I never look forward to doing them. And the funny thing is, it feels like half of all stages in Sonic 2 overall are mech stages. For whatever reason, it feels like that. The hero story isn't so bad, it feels like it's mostly Sonic stages, but the, the dark story? It feels like it's almost all mech stages. Like, why in a Sonic game are most of this game's stages mech stages? Like, that is the least Sonic thing possible that you could have front-running your game. I mean, I'm not saying that mathematically there are literally more mech stages than anything else, but that's what it feels like. I mean, feel free to do the math for me, because I'm far too lazy to, but that it feels like this is mostly a mech-focused game. In terms of the hero story and the dark story, the hero story is really boring. <laughs> There's pretty much no story here. It's the old-fashioned, oh, Sonic and his friends are trying to stop Eggman. Um, oh, Eggman's doing something up in space? Well, let's follow him up to space. And that's pretty much the whole story. You don't really get a sense of any any layers to this story. It's just a straightforward hero's got to stop the villain sort of thing. There's no there's no arcs or anything like that. There's no character dilemmas or inner turmoil amongst Sonic, Tails, or Knuckles. They're all just kind of there in their final forms from beginning to end, just trying to stop Eggman. Which, I mean, you know, in one sense, that's a relief. Because in Sonic Adventure 1, they may have focused way too much on character. But in the other sense, it kind of makes the entire hero story feel more like a means to an end than anything else. It's like, oh, this is a Sonic game, so we better put Sonic Tails and Knuckles in this game for the sake of it. The dark story is where if you're more of a story person, then you're going to get more enjoyment out of it. So, you know, Shadow obviously has a uh, deep, meaningful, oh my god, this is the saddest, most crying face story in the world thing ever going for him. <sighs> With Maria and being the ultimate guy or whatever, and teaming up with Eggman because he believes that Maria wanted him to punish humanity 
for killing her or something. And so, but then later on he realizes, no, she wanted him to protect humanity. The exact opposite of what he thought. So basically all he cares about is what Maria wants. What, whatever Maria wants is what Shadow wants. That's basically the whole arc of his character. If she wanted him to go jump off the Empire State Building, he would do it without a second guess. Like that's literally Shadow's entire thing here like that's his thing is that he's basically a sick puppy and maria is his owner that's pretty much it um emo sad boy and all that stuff dr eggman is one sinister motherfucker in this game like he openly talks about killing he actively discusses killing sonic and killing his friends in this game without any remorse like i can't remember what rating this game was but I mean, Eggman kind of toes a line here. Like, I don't know. Like, he doesn't say anything. Like, he doesn't swear or anything. But some of the some of the things that he mentions in terms of like, oh, I want to kill Sonic or oh, I'm gonna kill Amy unless you don't come over here and give me what I want. Like, it's borderline psychopathic, and it's it's a very dark aspect of Eggman's character where he's he's very fixated on getting what he wants to a point where he's willing to kill to get whatever he wants, which is such. A turn I feel like from Sonic Adventure 1. I mean sure you know Eggman's probably pissed that the whole thing with chaos in the first game didn't work out and he's probably upset and embarrassed about that so that might motivate him to be to act a bit crazier in this next installment but god damn dude like calm the fuck down like you'll get the chaos emeralds uh, you'll get what you want and, and <laughs> besides at the end of this he ends up for he ends up like working with them he ends up siding with the heroes anyway, so not to mention that they forgive him for all these horrible things that he tried. He he literally tried to murder Sonic by launching him into deep space, and at the end of the game, they're all just standing side by side having willy-nilly conversations about what they're going to do when they get back to Earth, and their, their entire lives reflecting and all that. It's like, what the f***? Basically, if you just want good gameplay, the hero story is where it's at. The dark story is better for story if you're more of a story person. The reason that, that the hero story is better for gameplay is because it feels like there's more speed and treasure hunting sections than there are mech sections. As I've said before, the mech sections are pretty bad and probably the worst part of this game. But in the hero story, it you get like six whole Sonic stages and then quite a few knuckle stages in there too. It's just more well balanced. Like the dark story is just all mech sections, I swear to God. Shadow has like three levels in this game, even though he's supposed to be like the center of this entire story that's happening here. They really dropped the ball with Shadow gameplay wise in retrospect here. Like, first of all, Shadow is obviously slower than Sonic here. Like, there's a big difference in speed between Sonic and Shadow. Shadow is way slower, and that makes the very few stages that he does have kind of less interesting than Sonic's, in my opinion. His stages also aren't as good as Sonic's stages. There is that Sky Rail level that he, go that he goes through at the midpoint of the game, which had a lot of potential, but damn is that level short. Like, it ends before it really begins, in my opinion. Like, that one could have been expanded on more, especially since Shadow has, like, three or four levels tops, and the rest are basically just Eggman mech sections. Like, man, like, they really didn't give Shadow enough to do in this game. Sonic stages, though, are pretty good. I mean, they're probably the best part of the game, I'd say. I mean, I guess, to be honest with you, that's not really saying a whole lot. When I compare Sonic stages in Sonic Adventure 2 to Sonic stages in Sonic Adventure 1, in my mind, there is no contest. Sonic Adventure 1 stages are far superior. And the reason for it is because Sonic Adventure 1 stages feel much more open and willing to give you multiple ways of getting to the end of the stage. Multiple paths, if you will. Sonic Adventure 2 stages feel like they're much more streamlined and they're just more focused on providing you with spectacle, action-focused automatic sections where you're running through loops and stuff, and they're, they're just more concerned with just driving you to the end of the level rather than giving you the space and the opportunity to explore the level a little bit and to discover secrets. They're just more one-dimensional is what I'm saying. Same with Shadow stages. In general, the speed stages are uh, kind of a downgrade. Uh, compared to Sonic Adventure 1's. I just 
got to say that. And the problem there is that, in my mind, the speed stages are what carry these adventure games. And the fact that Sonic Adventure 2's speed stages are a letdown compared to Sonic 1's, well, that doesn't really speak good things for Sonic Adventure 2. Um, the treasure hunting stages, though, like, I still love these. Like, I don't know why people give them a hard time. Like, it's, I guess it just comes really easy to me to find things in games. I mean, the radar system was brushed up on a little bit, although I don't really appreciate the fact that they're only letting you, they're only giving you the position of one of the emeralds rather than multiple. I kind of prefer having them tell me where multiple of them are rather than one at a time, but whatever. The biggest blemish in the treasure hunting stages would definitely be Mad Space with Rouge. This level is awful. You have this very vertical space situation here, and there's this gravity system where basically whatever piece of land you're standing on, you have to adhere to that land's gravity. And if you try to go anywhere else, it won't let you, and it makes you kind of stuck, and you have to find specific paths that let you to escape from that and it's so awkward and so clumsy and this stage is huge and it's so annoying having to find three little emeralds scattered across this way too big map but knuckles's space level is amazing it's like the exact opposite of rouge's space level first of all the music um let's <sighs> god these dude When it comes to music in Knuckles treasure hunting stages specifically, this game brings it with the tracks. Like, oh my god, you got Pumpkin Hill, you got Meteor Shower, Aquatic Mines. Like, these these tracks are straight vibes, dude. Like, damn. Uh, Meteor Herd, that's the name of it. I, I, I got it right, uh, eventually. I also love how when you listen to the lyrics of every single one of Knuckles' tracks, it's basically just the rapper mean mugging about how he's Knuckles and he's trying to protect the Master Emerald. I know that it's here, I can sense it in my feet. The great emerald whose power allows me to feel. I can't see a thing, but it's around somewhere. I'm gonna hold my head because I have no fear. Oh, Knuckles, you're so dedicated to your one purpose in life. I love it. I also love how Amy is just like the absolute bottom of the barrel when it comes to just existing. <laughs> like literally nobody in this game cares about her. Like she could literally like get hit by a bus as these guys are walking down the street and nobody else would bat an eye or even acknowledge that she's missing. If Amy got lost, nobody would file a missing persons report. In general, it feels like the social dynamics with Team Hero is very imbalanced. I mean, it feels like Sonic and Tails hold all the power here, and Knuckles and Amy are just kind of tagging along and acting as dead weight to Sonic and Tails. Like, there's this scene where Tails and Amy are sitting on the street, and Knuckles appears, and Tails is on the phone with Sonic, and Amy and Knuckles are trying to talk to him, and he's just ignoring their asses. Not to mention that, without even saying anything to them, he just hangs up the phone and just drives off and just leaves those two there. Like, damn, Tails, I know that he arced out in the first game, but jeez, I didn't realize he would become a menace by the second one. Okay, and to wrap things up in Sonic Adventure 2, we have the last story. Now, this is where everything is wrapped up and everything is all, you know, fun, fun, final boss, spectacle time here. Super Sonic, Super Shadow, you know the deal. So, you got Dr. Gerald who pops up and who says he wants to destroy the world for taking everything away from him, that including Maria. And it turns out Shadow isn't actually the ultimate life form. It's this big-ass bio-lizard what? How is a giant lizard the, considered the ultimate life form? How is that an ultimate life form? How? It's just so random to me. Anyways, the final boss is a two-part boss, which is, you know, fine enough. I mean, like, I feel like this final boss just describes Sonic Adventure 2 as a whole, uh, parallel. Like, it's fine. It's there. Um, it's not as good as I remember it being as a kid, but it's fine. <laughs> it doesn't piss me off, so, you know, that's a plus. Um, it's cool being up in space, being Sonic and Shadow in their super form. Yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like this boss is also just a means to an end. It's also very spectacle heavy, um, which makes sense. Uh, that's very traditional with Sonic, so...
I don't know, man. To be honest with you, Sonic Adventure 2 just... I mean, it's sad, you know? Like, I loved this game as a kid, and I looked up to this version of Sonic as a kid. I thought he was so cool, so charismatic. But you know, as you get older, man, the things that you once loved, they aren't as cool, they aren't as special, they don't shine as brightly. I mean, Sonic Adventure 2 was a great time at one point, and now, to me, it, there isn't, it's not bad, it's not really good, it's just kind of there. I mean, you know, passage of time sucks. Still waiting on that Sonic Adventure 3, though. You know, that's that's going to be a real hit. That's going to... Holy shit. That's... Wow, that's going to... That's going to poop all the pants there. 